uh, was also very important. And uh, the third major dam is uh, the most important one. And this is the Rogun Dam, and this is still under construction. And it is going to cost them about two to five billion dollars, and uh, it is going to generate about 3,600 megawatt of electricity. So uh, when this particular dam is completed, automatically uh, Tajikistan is going to uh, utilize this particular surplus energy and they are going to uh, sell this uh, particular uh, energy and uh, earn a lot of money out of that. So in that context, uh, Pakistan is also looking towards Tajikistan just to overcome its energy woes. We are a country of about 220 million people and uh, we are now improving uh, with the passage of time. Our industry is growing. So we need more and more energy from other countries. And uh, China is helping us a lot in this uh, context, but um, we need to find many other ways. So Pakistan and Tajikistan, along with India and Kyrgyzstan, they carried out a deal in 2016 uh, Casa 1000 with the name Casa 1000 in which they are going to, um, uh, you know, come up with a grid line which is going to uh, take place from Kyrgyzstan to Tajikistan, from Tajikistan to Afghanistan and from Afghanistan to it is going to come to Pakistan. So in this way, Pakistan is going to get 1000 megawatt of electricity in summer season when uh, the demand is high. Now, this particular project was, uh, you know, conceived as a, you know, um, hypothetical and ambitious by many, but it is possible because uh, in the world right now, there are many, many uh, major projects which are there, uh, infrastructure is there, like for example, uh, for example, the North American grid, which is about 340,000 kilometers long, and that particular grid actually uh, is the core of uh, America's, you know, uh, power supply. So if you look at that particular uh, uh, grid line that is uh, that provide uh, electricity to, to about 334 million customers in the United States of America, and they generate about 830, 830,000 megawatt of electricity, which is equal to US $1 trillion worth of assets. So if such projects can take place in the world, I think, uh, Casa 1000 is a very small project. It is uh, not uh, that uh, issue. Another major project in the world is about 230 kilometers of European power grid system. Um, so this is also a major power system, which is very long and very expensive, and which is providing you know power generation to the whole uh, Europe. So Casa uh, 1000 uh, is going to be uh, 1,222 kilometers or long. A great line, um, which started in 2016 uh, by Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Afghanistan, and Pakistan. And this particular system, uh, this particular line, grid line is going to cost uh, all these countries with about $1.16 billion. And with these, uh, you know, uh, with this amount, they are going to get, um, you know, 1300 megawatt of electricity, especially Afghanistan and Pakistan. They are going to be the recipients of that particular energy. So the entire project is going to be completed by 2023 if situation normalizes in Afghanistan. So um, this is going to be the target and uh, it is going to help the regional connectivity, regional uh, development. Um, so um, this is very important thing uh, as far as uh, this region is concerned. Pakistan is going to get 1,000 megawatt of electricity out of this uh, particular project. And Afghanistan is going to get about 300 megawatt of electricity, um, which is also you know, significant for Afghanistan. The second most important thing in Tajikistan is the uh, railway uh, uh, connectivity uh, with the regional countries <clears throat> and transportation is very important and strategic imperative for Tajikistan because a country, a landlocked country would require would need, um, you know, greater connectivity through roads, through uh, corridors, through uh, railways and all these things. So Tajikistan in this regard, they are connecting themselves with the rest of the world through uh, their, um, in future, their, their railway systems. The country's border disputes with Uzbekistan have partly impeded Tajik efforts to develop an advanced transportation infrastructure with the help of Russia, China, but um, they are still, they are coming up with, you know, new initiatives. For example, uh, Tajik Avan Turkman railway project uh, with an estimated cost of about 
uh, two billion dollars is going to change the destiny of Tajikistan, Afghanistan, and <clears throat> Turkmenistan because it is going to connect these three three, three states. They are going to um, uh, the, the mobilization would be quick, and they are going to improve their economy and economic integration would improve. So this particular project is uh, very important for Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, and of course Afghanistan, which is uh, seriously suffering from um, uh, terrorism and extremism and all these issues. Many other projects are also going to take place, which is going to connect uh, China uh, with uh, Tajikistan and Central Asian countries. And of course, uh, the Tajikistan is also going to connect themselves with the you know, uh, European countries in future through these projects. So the 500 kilometer project is aimed at connecting the landlocked uh, regional countries with South Asian and Eurasian markets. Um, this project is funded by the Asian Development Bank and bears high strategic value for Tajikistan. And for Tajikistan, it is notable opportunity to increase its ability to export production, uh, items of agriculture related to the the fight against uh, terrorism and extremism is another important thing for Tajikistan. This is the third important thing for Tajikistan. And because of their border with Afghanistan, they are suffering from these particular issues. And they are seriously tackling all these issues with the help and support of uh, you know, Russia, China, and other countries. So the fight against illicit drugs has turned into a strategic imperative for Tajikistan. The issue is a significant rational security challenge for Dushanbe. And uh, Tajikistan has received hundreds of millions of dollars in aid from the United States of America, Europe, Russia, and China just to fight against uh, you know, uh, illicit drug trafficking, terrorism, and extremism in the region. But little has been achieved <clears throat> due to the corruption and poor governance in the region, in the country. So if you look at uh, this uh, particular border, um, Tajikistan and Afghanistan border, as I told you before, I think that uh, Afghan drug trafficking um, it has got three routes. One route is through Pakistan, another route is through Iran, and third route is through Tajikistan. So 1300 kilometer border, uh, Tajik Afghan uh, border, is porous and poorly polished, uh, with an estimated annual flow through Tajikistan to the world markets of nearly 90 tons of narcotics, which is about 20% uh, of Afghan opium and heroin, which is shipped from this particular region. And more than four tons of opium moves daily so, which is a serious threat uh, for the, uh, you know, uh, for Tajikistan, for Russia, for Central Asian countries, and of course for Afghanistan. If you look at uh, the trading routes, you can analyze that how the Afghan drug trafficking is contributing to the instability and turmoil of, uh, you know, Central Asian countries like Tajikistan. So, Tajikistan plays a, a you know, a important role in curbing drug trafficking, but they have been. So far, um, it has not uh, played any significant role. And I told you before, because of the corruption, because of the incompetence <clears throat> which is there in Tajikistan. So terrorism and extremism uh, is a serious challenge, uh, not only for Tajikistan, but also for the regional countries. And the Rahmanov's government has been criticized uh, for its uh, harsh approach to and treatment of Islamists, as uh, the people who uh, use Islam, um, and they actually uh, curb IMU, Islamic movement of Uzbekistan and other terrorist groups in the region uh, with the help of Russia and China. So EDIM, IMU, Hizbut Tahrir and other terrorist or small scale terrorist organizations were curbed by Tajikistan because uh, when Tajikistan was failing, facing a civil war in the 90s, America, Russia and uh, China, they came up with the help and uh, Tajikistan then uh, defeated these groups and pushed these groups, IMU especially, from Tajikistan to uh, Afghanistan. So Fergana Valley, we have already discussed about the Fergana Valley region and this particular tri-border area is actually the epicenter of militancy and extremism. So Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan and Uzbekistan, it's a tri-border area uh, among these three states and uh, terrorist groups like IMU and Hizbut Tahrir, uh, you know, used to flourish there before 9-11. So, um, but Tajikistan played a very important role and they fought back against these militant groups in the Fergana Valley region with the support of Russia. And ultimately they pushed these militants from this region to uh, other areas. Uh, another important area of concern for Pakistan is the Indian presence in the region. 
And uh, as we know that India is there in Afghanistan, but India 